Hi, hello, and welcome again to Tisfella Academy. Today, I will show you how to build a simple React user login system using Supabase. If you don't know Supabase, it is, is an open source platform that allows you to quickly add features like authentication, database, storage, and APIs to your application without needing to build a backend from scratch. Let's start by setting up our project. I will be using Visual Studio Code as my code editor. For setup, we will use Vite. Vite is a modern build tool for front-end projects. It is very fast, lightweight, and is used to create React applications much quicker than older tools like Create React App. Open a terminal. First, make sure that Node.js is installed. Type in the terminal node-v. If a version number is displayed, that means Node is already installed. If not, you can install it from the official Node.js website. It's very simple. Just download the installer, run it, and follow the instructions. Basically, keep clicking next, next, next until the installation finishes. Create a new React project. Now let's create our React project. In the terminal, type npm create vite at latest. It will ask you a few questions. First, type y to confirm. Then it will ask for a project name. Here, just type my app. Next, it will ask for a framework. Select React. Finally, it will ask for a variant. Choose JavaScript and press Enter. That's it. The setup is done. Install dependencies. Now move inside your new project folder by typing cd my app. Then install all required packages by typing npm install. The installation may take a few seconds depending on your internet connection. Run the project. Once installation is complete, run the app with npm run dev. If the app runs successfully, you should see a message in the terminal showing a local link, something like localhost followed by numbers. Just copy that link, open it in your browser, and you should see the default React and Vite starter app running. And that means your project is ready. Now that our React project is running, let's install the extra tools we need. For this project, we need one main thing, Supabase client. This allows our React app to talk to Supabase for authentication and database. So in the terminal, make sure you are inside your project folder, then type npm install at supabase slash supabase dash js. This will download the Supabase client library into your React app. Next, we need to set up a Supabase project online. Go to the website supabase.com and create a free account if you don't already have one. It's simple, just follow the instructions. You can log in using GitHub or using your email. I'll leave creating your account to you if you haven't done it yet. After logging in, you need to create a new organization. A little explanation. An organization in Supabase is like a workspace where you can manage your projects. It helps you separate different projects or clients, and you can have multiple members collaborating in the same organization. Just fill in the required information for your organization. Organization name, organization type, plan, start with a free plan for now. For now, I have already created one and named it Tisfola. Click on your organization, then click on New Project. It will ask you for a name for the project, let's name it My App, a password for the database, and which region you want to host it in. Just choose the one closest to you. After a few moments, your project will be ready. Now, very important, on the left side, go to Settings, then click API. Here you will see two pieces of information, the project URL, the Anon public key. We will need both of these values to connect our React app to Supabase. Now let's connect our React project to Supabase. In the root of your React project, create a file called .nv. Inside this file, we are going to save our Supabase URL and the public key. We will write them like this. Supabase URL equals your project URL. Just copy it from the settings. Supabase anon key equals your anon public key. By saving them here, we can keep our keys safe and also make them easy to use in our React code. Now let's set up the Supabase client. Inside the SARC folder, create a new folder and name it lib. Inside that lib folder, create a new file and call it supabase-client.js. This is the file where we're going to set up our Supabase connection. First, we need to import the function called createClient from the Supabase library. Uh, this function will help us create a client instance that connects our React app to our Supabase project. Then we need to get the Supabase URL and the Supabase anon key. These are the values we saved earlier in our environment file. So here we add two constants. 
one called supabase URL, which equals import.meta.end.supabase URL, another one called supabase anon key, which equals import.meta.end.supabase anon key. What we are doing here is very simple. We are importing the saved parameters from the environment file and making them available inside our code. Next, we create a new constant called supabase. We call the create client function and pass in our URL and our anon key. Finally, we export this supabase object. To give you a little general explanation, the supabase URL tells our app where our supabase backend is located. The supabase anon key is like the public key that gives us permission to talk to supabase from the client side. And the supabase object we created is basically our connection to supabase. Anytime we want to log in a user, sign up, or interact with the database, we will just import this object and use it. This way, we set up our Supabase connection once, and we can reuse it anywhere in our project. So now it's time to build our UI using React. For that, we are going to modify our app.js file. In order to save time, I have already prepared a simple UI for you. Don't worry, we will explain everything step by step. You will also find the full code in the description of the video. So let's copy the code and paste it inside our app.js file. And then, uh, I also prepared the styles, so copy those as well into your index.css file. Before moving on, let's clean up our project a little bit. You can safely delete the unnecessary files that come by default with Vite and React. Now let's explain the code together. At the very top of the file, we import the CSS file so that our styles will apply to this component. Then we have the app function. This function returns something that looks like HTML, but it's not exactly HTML. It's called JSX. JSX stands for JavaScript XML, and it allows us to write markup directly inside JavaScript. Inside the return, we have a main container div, inside it a card, and inside that card we have a title, some input fields for email and password, and finally two buttons, one for login and one for sign up. At the very end, we export the app component. And if you remember, this app component is imported and rendered in the main.jsx file, which is where React mounts it into the page. So to test if everything works correctly, let's run our development server. In the terminal, type npm run dev. Copy the local link it gives you, open it in your browser, and you should see our simple login UI with the inputs and buttons. And that's it. We now have our basic UI ready. Now our UI is finished, let's build our login logic. The first thing we need is to get the entered password and email information. For that, we're gonna store them in state. So we insert two states. The first one is for email. We create it and keep it empty at the beginning. Then we do the same and add a state for the password. Next, go to the email input. Here, we want the value of the input to always be the same as the email state we just defined. And we also want that when the input value changes, the email state changes too. So, so it becomes equal to the value entered by the user. We set it up so that whenever the user types something, the email state updates with that value. Do the same for the password. Uh, just copy the logic and adjust it. Now, when the user clicks on the sign up or login button, we want to use those values to log in. Let's start with sign up. We'll organize the code by adding a function. Let's call it handle sign up. This means that when the user clicks the sign up button, the handle sign up function will be executed. We define this function before the return. To, to test, let's first just make it print a message in the console saying sign up button clicked. Now open your browser, go to the console, clear it and click the sign up button. As you can see, it says sign up button clicked. That means everything is working fine. Let's go back to the code. To test if the email and password are successfully stored in state, we can just print them in the console. So let's test it. Type an email, for example, tisfola, and a password, for example, 1234, then click sign up. And yes, it prints them. So now let's build the signup logic. Here, we'll need to add some new states. The first one is user, which will store the user information. By default, we set it to null. We also add an error state for storing error messages if they exist and a loading state that we'll use. I'll explain how in a moment. Now let's complete our handle signup function. 
The first thing here is to initialize the error and loading states. So we make the error empty and we set loading to true. I added this loading state to show some indicators. For example, when the user clicks the sign up button, we should disable it until sign up is completed. Or if there's an error, we can display it. This is helpful to avoid issues. To explain better why we use this loading state, for example, let's add a simple logic. If loading is true, show please wait, otherwise show sign up. Let's test that. Refresh, click sign up, and it shows please wait. So I think you get the idea. So now, after setting the error and loading states, let's complete the logic. The idea here is that we send a sign up request to Supabase with the email and password information. Supabase will respond and will store that response in data. If there's an error, we'll store it in error. We'll use the Supabase client that we configured earlier. So we call Supabase authentication and use the sign up function. Now, Supabase works better with await, and the reason is that it returns a promise. So we need to wait for the response before moving on. If we use await, that also means our function must be asynchronous. In other words, we're telling the code, pause here, wait for the response, then continue. Once the request is done, we set loading back to false. This means the signup process is finished. If there's an error, we'll show it by setting the error state to the error message. Finally, if the signup was successful, we set the user state to data.user. If signup fails, then user stays as null. And of course, if there's an error, we should display it. So before the input, if there is an error, show an error message. It can just be a simple paragraph with a class name of error and inside it, the error message. Then let's add some basic styling. Go to the index file, add a style for the error class and simply make the color red. So now let's test if this works. Refresh, and hmm, I think there's an error here. It says Supabase URL is required. I think the error is in the Supabase client. It looks like Supabase isn't getting the value from score URL. The problem is that invite environment variables must begin with vite. So let's correct the environment variable names to start with vite. Now let's test again. Refresh, and yeah, the error disappears. Let's try signing up. Type an email and a password, then click sign up. As you can see, when you press it, please wait. And here, the error functionality also works. For example, it says the password must be greater than six characters. So let's try another password with more than six characters. Type it, press enter and no error is shown, which means sign up was successful. To verify, go to Supabase, open your project and check, check the authentication area. You'll see your account added there with your email, but notice it says the email is not verified. So let's continue building our system. The next step is to add logic so that if a user is logged in, we don't show the login UI. Instead, we show a message indicating that the user is logged in. So in the container, let's add a simple check. If the user is not set, show the login interface. If the user exists, show a message like welcome and display the user's email. Now let's complete the login. It's the same as sign up. For the login button, add an on click with a function called handle login. Here too, if loading is true, show please wait, otherwise show login. Then define the handle login function. It follows the same logic as sign up. Just copy the content and modify it. This time, instead of sign up, we use sign in with password. And that's it. So here we can also add a disabled state when loading. Also, let's disable the login and sign up buttons if no email or no password is entered. We can add some style for disabled buttons too. For example, make the cursor not allowed. Let's test it now. As you can see, before entering email and password, the buttons show the not allowed cursor. Nice. Now let's enter the same email we signed up with before and the same password, then press enter. And yeah, it says email not confirmed. That means our login works. We just need to confirm the email. To verify, let's try entering wrong info. It says invalid login credentials. That's good. It means our system works correctly. 
but I notice a small bug. The please wait message is shown on both buttons. To fix that, it's better to show the please wait message on top instead of inside the buttons. So we delete it from the buttons and put it above the error message. Let's test again. Now it looks better. Next, let's confirm our email. Open your email inbox and find the confirmation message. Open the email and click the link. Now your email is confirmed. Try logging in again. And yeah, it logs in successfully. It says welcome and shows your email. That's great. So login works, but it's still not fully finished. Right now, if we refresh the page, you'll see the login interface again. We want that if the user is already logged in, the app should show a welcome message instead. To do that, we use something called a session. In app.js, we'll add a use effect hook. Use effect is a React hook that lets us run code when a component mounts, updates, or unmounts. I think the video is getting longer, so I'll put the code and explain it. First, we define a function called init. Inside it, we get the current session. Supabase stores user sessions, basically login tokens. Supabase.auth gets session fetches the current session from local storage if it exists. This means if there's already a logged in user, we set them in state. Otherwise, we set the state to null. Next, we listen for authentication changes. Supabase emits events whenever the authentication state changes. This makes the app react instantly when a user logs in or logs out. We update the state with set user. This keeps track of the currently logged in user. If session is null, the user is logged out. If session has a user object, the user is logged in. Finally, we clean up with unsubscribe. If the component unmounts, for example, if the user navigates away, we stop listening to auth events. This prevents memory leaks or duplicated subscriptions. To summarize, this code loads the logged in user when the page refreshes, keeps the user state set user updated whenever they log in, log out, or refresh their session, cleans up listeners when the component is destroyed. So now let's test again. Refresh your page, and as you can see, it no longer shows the login interface. That means the session was fetched successfully. Now there's still one thing missing, a logout button. Let's add it. After the welcome message, add a button section. You can copy it from here. Just create a button with on click equals handle logout. If loading is true, show please wait. Otherwise, show logout. Now let's define handle logout. It's similar to the other functions. Define it as an arrow function and make it async. Inside, just call supabase.auth.signout. Also for the button, you can remove email and password. We don't need them here. Let's test it. Click logout. And yes, it works. There was a small connection error earlier, but now it's fine. Refresh, try logging in again, enter your info, click login. Yeah, it works. Log out again, works perfectly. And that's it. We've finished our simple React plus Supabase login system. Note that this is just a basic version. In the future, we can build a more advanced system using Supabase. So if you've watched the video until this point and you have any questions or points to discuss, feel free to ask. That's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.